my name is Valeria Garcia Pozo. I am a rising sophomore at Kenyon College, and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit today about being a low income student at Kenyon. Um, I am a Spanish and English major intended, and I am from Athens, Georgia, but I was born in Peru, so I'm technically an international student. Um, I went to international Prio, I'm on an F1 visa, etc. So I know a lot of people. Um, when they're writing um, financial aid appeals, write about like they compare the package that they're getting from other schools. Um, I didn't really have a comparable package to Kenyon, and I was also told that comparing can sometimes not be the way to go when you want to make it seem like Kenyon is your really like your first choice. So I didn't mention that, um, and I was kind of told not to mention that anyway. Um, but that's just my experience. Um, during your first semester, you're going to do this as a group. So you're going to be assigned to an orientation leader group during orientation week. You kind of just pray and hope that you get a spot in the class because everyone submits it at the very same time. You want to put the hardest classes to get into or the classes that you want the most. You want to type those in first because those are going to be your priority classes and those are the ones you're going to be most likely to get into. Some students meet with their advisors and their advising group to register for classes all at the same time. This helps with feeling supported. If something goes wrong, your advisor can be available to email professors. If you need an entrance into a class, and you can also always email a professor ahead of time asking for course overrides or try and reserve a spot on their wait, wait list preemptively. Kenyon College is all one undergraduate school, as you guys probably know. The definition of major, minor, and concentration can kind of vary. So a major, um, at the end of your career at Kenyon, you're going to have to do comprehensive exam. That's kind of like a culminating project, kind of like a thesis. A minor, you can take several classes from a department without actually having to do a comprehensive examination. Concentrations are kind of like minors, but they don't actually have um, a specific department. So for past fail, um, you can only take three units of the 16 units required for graduation on a pass D fail or credit no credit basis. But within any given semester, you can only take one pass D fail class, unless you're taking more than 2.5 credits in one given semester. So there's this thing called mulliganing, where basically once and only once in your Kenyan career can you drop a class at any point in the year with no repercussions, except that you won't get a grade for it on your transcript. So this can only happen once, there are a lot of different kinds of advising on campus. It's really easy to find a mentor in your professors or in older students, but you do get assigned to a specific faculty advisor who is going to kind of be your guide and sign off on your classes when you choose them or if you decide to change them and who's going to kind of help you um, in your decisions regarding your major and your um, academic choices and your academic path on campus. So. The way that you're assigned your faculty advisor is you fill out a survey before orientation and you can kind of, you can talk about anything. Like you can request an advisor who um, has your same um, race or ethnic background, your same gender. Um, they'll definitely match you based on your academic interests. So if you say like, I'm dead set on becoming an English major, they will probably try to match you up with um, an advisor who is in the English department. Um, and it just really depends. I personally asked for uh, an advisor who would be like hard on me, who would keep me on track, and who was also a Latina woman, and I got exactly who I asked for. I had a really good experience with my faculty advisor, so it's not super hard to switch your advisor after a first year if you need to, but I think most people do stay with the advisor that they've been assigned, at least for their first year. What they'll do is they'll help you choose your classes for the first semester during orientation. You can schedule appointments with them throughout the year, and you should do so before the second semester as well to talk about what classes you'll take in the second semester. Um, they'll meet with you during orientation to talk about what classes you're planning to take that first semester. And they can also be a really good resource just for like campus involvement. My advisor encouraged me to be um, an AT. She recommended me for the program and she also really encouraged me to apply for it only really speak for humanities majors here but English sections especially the intro English sections are super popular they're often the first to go during registration so I would say to email professors in advance and be just as persistent as possible 
Um, Quest for Justice is also very popular. It's the intro poli sci class. Intro language classes, also super popular. Basically, all of the intro classes, those are super popular. It's really easy to contact your professors. Email is usually a really good bet. We also have a very small campus, so you can get to your professor's office really easily. And knowing your professor's office hours is a really good thing to they do. They do make a huge difference in getting your to know your professors, and they might even make a difference in your grades. Like if your professor sees that you're like really dedicated to their class and you're like on the cusp of getting an A or something, talking to your professors during office hours like might do it for them. It just might show them that you're dedicated enough. So Mod B is one of the trailer mod library spaces, as I said before. It's kind of the hangout of all the cool international kids. New side of Pierce in its off hours, so when people aren't actually dining. Common areas and rooms, sometimes I would say it's kind of hard to focus if you study in your room, so I try to avoid it, but since I study in there so infrequently, it can be a nice change of pace. The cubicle farm literally just has a bunch of cubicles um, where you can sit and kind of isolate yourself from everybody if you really need to study and crack down. So Wigan Street Coffee is our local coffee shop on campus. Um, that's a really, really great place to study. There are not always tables just because it's always really crowded. So I would get there early in the morning or in its off hours, which are like usually later in the night. But as for classes that do require more tests and more things like that, the way that it operates is that Angle um, will have his lecture based on the slideshow PowerPoint that he makes for us, but he's not reading off the PowerPoint. He's giving us supplementary information to what's already on the PowerPoint. So I would print out the slideshows and then write what the professor says, not what's already on the screen. Um, and then like for weekly quizzes, you want to read your notes aloud to yourself as if you were giving the lecture to somebody else and then do the same thing prior to tests. I am the vice president, like I mentioned before, of the first generation low income student organization. And the way that I got involved in that was, so this organization started last year and we had during the first semester, um, a dinner and discussion about being Bigley students and like just like what it's like navigating a space like Kenyan. Bigley is just a space for Bigley students and anybody who wants to be an ally to come and discuss what it's like to have these identities on Kenyan's campus. I'm the social media chair for Sisterhood. So that's our women of color support group on campus and just talking about like different issues that pertain to women of color. So like body image and like standards of beauty, what it's like to date on a predominantly white campus. I'm also a part of Alpha Sigma Tau, which is a national sorority. We're the only national sorority on campus. Um, there are lots of low income students in this group. I personally got a scholarship because the membership fee was pretty high like the dues for the semester. So there's for a small liberal arts college, surprisingly a lot of Greek life for such a small school. I am in AST, as I talked about before, which is the only national sorority on campus, but we also have a few local sororities, which have been at Kenyon for varying amounts of time. I think Kenyon is a, a space where like you can be in Greek life, but you can definitely also be involved in so many other things. Um, it's not super exclusive. Um, I would say like there's a good amount of like, I think there's more diversity than in other schools in our Greek life, but it could definitely be like increased, I think. A dining plan at Kenyon is really inclusive um, and like I would say pretty generous. So everybody has the same dining plan and there are different places on campus to get food. Um, there's restaurants on campus, there's the Kenyon Inn, which is pretty expensive. There's the Village Inn, which is like kind of mid price. Wigan Street Coffee, which is good for snacks and a bite and for your coffee, of course. And then there's the Village Market, which has sandwiches and like kind of like your small grocery store. This is pretty pricey, I'm not gonna lie. So I usually don't shop at the Village Market unless like I'm really in a bind and I don't have time to go to Walmart or another store in Mount Vernon. So on campus housing for everyone is guaranteed for all four years. Kenyon is a residential campus. It has a bunch of different options. Residential halls are mandatory for freshmen. So there are five options and you can kind of just rank them on your list. Um, then as a sophomore and up, there's a housing lottery for residence halls, or you also have the option to live in apartment cell housing, which is about a thousand dollars more. 
Um, and I will say another thing that you can avoid housing lottery if you're part of an organization that has theme or division housing. So um, for example, I'm part of my sorority and we have several rooms reserved in Hannah Hall for our division housing so I'm living in division next year. There are different options also for like rooming with roommates so triples are the least expensive option where you live with two roommates. Singles you live by yourself and they're the most expensive option for a house for um, your room and then of course doubles are in between that and triples and doubles are included in your financial aid package but for singles you're going to have to dish out like the rest of the money I think it's about a thousand dollars more. Kenyon is in the middle of, um, it's pretty isolated. Mount Vernon is the nearest small town. It has a really cute downtown. It also has the essentials to go shopping, but there isn't that much to do. Um, my favorite spots on campus, I love Wigan Street Coffee. Um, I love going there after class with my friends. The CAC is our super big athletic center. It's free for all students to use. Pierce is a social hub, so I love going to Pierce because I really love being around people. It's a great place because I think you can always kind of find a friend at Pierce. You'll never find yourself alone unless you want to be. I love that it's a close-knit community. I, I really like being a part of things. I really like being a part of groups and like just feeling like I have a place and that I belong and I definitely feel that on Kenyon's campus because we are such a small community. It could, could feel pretty isolating to be a lower income student and especially to be a non-white student.